Hello, everybody. My name is Shaker Bahan, and I am the Asset Management Planning Director with the Minnesota Department of Transportation. Um, and I wanted to share with you all uh, an innovative um, kind of tool that we put together um, in response to actually a state statute, um, 17403, which requires Minnesota, the DOT, to perform um, life cycle assessment and corridor risk assessment as part of our asset management programs at the district level. Um, so in response to that, we work with Applied Pavement Tech um, to put together what we call our, our district life cycle plans. Um, and we did this at, like I said, the district level for our primary pavement and bridge assets, um, all three systems, um, as well as four different ancillary um, classes of assets, um, which we get into there. Um, so kind of getting into sort of what we're, what the tool looks like um, here, and then we can talk a little bit about how we envision it being used um, and kind of what, what our rollout method is for this. Um, we are looking at the pavement district life cycle plan here, and I have district five highlighted, which is our metro district. Um, and we're looking at their pavements, the interstate system. So what it shows here is our baseline 10 year condition. Um, so our anticipated projected outcomes 10 years from now doing, continuing what, what we're doing as our current approach. Um, comparing that to what our current condition is here and being able to look at sort of the Delta in, in anticipated deterioration um, or decline of the system. We also get into needs um, for this system um, over that 10 year horizon by category. So what, what is needed for preservation, reconstruction and total rehab costs. Um, we can look at that across the non-NHS system um, and other state-owned NHS and U.S. systems. Similarly, we can do that for bridges, um, NHS and non-NHS. And then we've also developed a very similar kind of product for four different classes of assets. Um, and here we're looking at culverts. Uh, we have them for culverts, curb ramps, earth retaining structures, and our sidewalk system. Um, and here, kind of get into a little bit, slightly more detail. Um, you look at our kind of performance trends. Um, so what our performance trend is here for our worst first strategy um, versus a, an actual preservation kind of, you know, life cycle optimized strategy. Um, comparing that our current versus 10 year projected outcomes, um, looking at different approaches and what the different needs are um, across that. So what our Maintenance versus our capital costs are for a worst first strategy. We can look at our weight, what our maintenance and capital costs are for a, a you know, preservation uh, maximization strategy. And that kind of breaks that sort of down here in, in a table form here too. Um, so this is gonna be a great tool for us to think about how we're gonna roll it out um, to discuss with the districts. Um, and you know, we're kind of in the final changes and updates share uh, portion of this. Um, process. Um, and now we're kind of at the at the stage where strategizing how we'll be rolling this out um, to the district level and, and having them kind of implement this within their decision making process to kind of make that determination of what sort of, you know, project selection um, prioritization should they be thinking about? Um, what mix of projects, you know, should they be thinking about from a capital standpoint across assets? Um, what sort of split of maintenance and capital dollars that they might have at their discretion should they be thinking about maximizing or or moving um, to sort of maximize performance um, and condition outcomes um, and continue to roll this out here through the latter half of this year and early next year and gather feedback on that's been in this next kind of 10-year uh, capital highway update plan process. Um, so this is a kind of a really unique tool that we thought would be very helpful in sharing. Um, we have a lot of this data readily available as we updated the 2022 TAMP just last year. Um, so, you know, a lot of the data was um, really kind of widespread. Um, it was all, um, you know, as fairly updated as it, as it could possibly have been. Um, and we had very consistent uh, inspection data on some of those other four classes of structures too. So we really knew that we had, um, you know, modern, uh, modern up-to-date data and all this. Um, that is all I wanted to share. Thanks.